This is Jeff and Linda Hoppy with the Crimson Circle. We're here at the Villa Amio doing an event for the Koreans when during this event, Adamas made a reference to the coronavirus. As a matter of fact, it was during the very first session. I know there was a lot of concern with the Koreans who are here because the outbreak uh, in South Korea has, has been pretty significant. So Adamas actually started the whole workshop with a short discussion about coronavirus. And we thought it would be of interest to Shambra all around the world to get his perspective of that. This was being translated, so the, the pace is a little bit slower than normal. But we really thought the information would be good for everyone. You're free to download this, of course, free of charge, and you're free to distribute it as well. So with that, here's Adamas talking about the coronavirus. This was recorded on February 26th, right here in Kona, Hawaii. So let's talk about this coronavirus. Oh, does it have you a little scared? Yeah. A little worried? Coronavirus, where did it get its name? Anybody know what corona means? Sun? Yes, it has to do with the sun, possibly. Corona is a, is a Spanish word, uh, most popular in use about 300 years ago. Corona means uh, – well, actually, the original word was la corona, la corona, the crown. The crown, and it back in Spain, it could only be used by royals. That word, corona, to refer to the crown, to the king and the queen. Interesting. Corona also now means circle. Circle, uh, and it's also used to refer to the sun, the gaseous uh, hot spot of the sun. But the original meaning, the crown, la corona, what does that have to do with a virus? Well, let's look at what a virus is. Any virus is just about imbalance in human consciousness. Every, every virus, whether it is a physical or a mental virus. The sexual energy virus that Tobias talked about many years ago is an imbalance in the masculine and feminine energies. The virus uh, doesn't have an agenda. It's just there because there is an imbalance, an imbalance. And it's there to clear that imbalance, to try to bring things back into harmony into harmony. So you know, uh, you possibly know that I've said energy. Energy is nothing other than a communication. It's all energy is, a song, a communication. When the energy gets out of harmony, out of resonance, goes into imbalance, it has to naturally come back to balance. All energy seeks resolution and balance. So if the song of energy is out of balance, something will happen to bring it back into balance. That's one of the things a virus does. Sometimes a, a physical virus is just as simple as a way of clearing out energy imbalances in your body. The common flu. Uh, everybody gets it. The flu, the regular common flu, is actually okay. Okay. It releases toxins and imbalances in your body. Uh, it serves a purpose. Generally, once a year, maybe once every two years, you get a little uh, flu or a cold it's designed to bring your energy back into balance. It's a good time to take two, three days, lay in bed, sip tea, feel bad, cuddle up, 
watch something good on television, if there is anything good on television. Do anything except go on Facebook. Uh, that's terrible when you're having the flu, just awful. <laughs> but we have this special crown virus, the coronavirus, right now. It's doing a lot of things. It's getting a lot of worldwide attention. In your country, it's considered an epidemic. Everybody's worried about it. Everybody's afraid to go out, to touch, to go to a restaurant and eat food, or to have sex with other people. Maybe not sex, but they're afraid of everything else. <laughs> So feel into this coronavirus for a moment, the, the, the crown on top of the head. Why would that virus be uh, affecting the planet right now? And it will affect for the next two, three, maybe six months. It could go crazy, I mean really crazy. And of course the media, the news of feeding off of it. You say the word airport and everybody gets afraid of going to the airport. So what this is, it's a very interesting virus. It's there because of an imbalance uh, in the economy of the world. It's an economic virus, but it shows up as the flu. So you see, there's a lot of imbalances on the planet right now with economy, finances. I mean, it has been for a long time, but right now it's really coming to the surface. There are a, a few who have a lot and a lot who have very few. With the modern technologies that this planet has, there shouldn't be that what is called the bottom billion the ones in extreme poverty. There shouldn't be. Technology has the ability to provide an even playing field for everyone, whether you're super rich or very poor. Everybody has the ability to have a mobile device, a phone, that has the ability to instantly connect to anywhere in the world to research anything you want, to do just about anything you want. One of the beauties of technology is it has the capability to democratize the planet. In other words, everyone has the same access. What you do with that access is up to you, of course. But everybody has the same capability. It's not like uh, just a small group has all this information and data at their uh, fingertip and many others don't. No, everyone, just about everyone on the planet has it. As the technology sweeps across the planet, it should be eradicating a lot of the economic imbalances. I'm not talking about socialism or communism. Those are not economic ideals, uh, I ideologies, or platforms. Those are something else. But I'm talking about the fact that in this planet right now, there shouldn't be people who are starving. There's plenty of food on this planet, and there's plenty of capability to grow more food. Every day, more food goes wasted on this planet than can possibly be eaten by everyone, including those who are starving. Food is thrown away in the farm fields because they can't get it to the market. Food is thrown away at restaurants because people order too much and don't eat all of it. Food is thrown away because uh, the season is ending and there's nothing to do with it. It's the distribution of the food that is causing the problem. There are dictators, governments in the world that withhold food from their people. There are 
countries in this world that are so filled with corruption that they can operate efficient distribution, getting food from the farm to the end user. All the capabilities are there. All the capabilities are there. But yet there is a, well, a corruption of human consciousness that keeps it from happening. On the planet right now, in most places, not all, but most, there's a tremendous amount of jobs, work. If you don't want to work for somebody else now with a computer and the internet at your desk, you can create your own business like that easily, within days. Within days. So everything is there for the planet right now, for humanity to have access to have goods, to have food, to have medical supplies. But yet there's still this corruption that's causing the imbalance. And that's what this whole thing with the coronavirus is about. You know, the Crown, like the royals, like they have it and nobody else does. That's why they call it the coronavirus. I mean, they didn't think of that, but that's the energy behind it. Interesting. So what is this virus going to do besides be big in the news, kill some people, create a lot of fear on the planet? And very few are really going to understand what the coronavirus really represents energetically. You know, kind of the kind of the overall concept behind it. What this virus is really going to do in these couple of months ahead is create a lot of economic disruption. Economic disruption. Watch the news and see as plants, uh, factories, all around the world close down, entire cities close down, cruise ships with nobody on them, airplanes with hardly any passengers. Everybody's going to be sitting at home worried about this thing, and it's going to affect the economy. It's going to affect the finances of the planet for a while. Well, then it'll come back. It'll be okay. But with all the worrying, I wanted to help you to understand what's really going on with this thing called the uh, La Corona, ultimately about an economic imbalance. So what does that mean to you? Maybe nothing. What does that mean to you? Well, if you're afraid that you might get it, you know that fear actually will attract it, but if you're afraid you might get it, feel into your own economic imbalance. Let's call it your, your abundance imbalance. Is there one? Are you, are you abundant in your life, or are you just getting by? Are you struggling to pay the bills? Do you give yourself excuses that uh, you can't make more money because you have a bad family, a bad job, you're not very smart, uh, other people are preventing you? Well, those are all energy imbalances. You can have all the abundance you want. I mean, it's abundance is pretty easy. All you want. But if you're still holding on to some of these old issues about abundance, well, then things like the coronavirus are going to scare you. One of the big issues with Chambra over the years has been about abundance. No money. A lot of it is because of the old spiritual belief that to be spiritual you had to be poor. You couldn't have a lot of money. Where'd that come from? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. But so many of the world's religions promote that while asking you for money for themselves and having, you know, all these mansions and artwork and Vaticans and everything else, asking the poor people for money. Let's take a deep breath with that. I felt it was appropriate to start with our 
uh, coronavirus talk because it has so much to do with right now with uh, with the planet and even with your journey, letting energy serve you. So watch for the next few months as this virus becomes epidemic all around the world. Watch how it affects the economy of the planet. Interesting. So we need to start off with a discussion of the hottest topic on the planet right now. What's that? Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus is uh, it's more than what it seems, uh, and and you'll see perhaps by the end of our session today how this all kind of ties in. The coronavirus is um, well, it's getting the news on the planet right now. Why is that? Well, because drama. Oh, drama, but because the news is faster than ever, you mm. get the news very, very quickly, and people on social media, people on uh, with their blogs and everything else, it's very, very quick. It, it just goes to show how quickly something can be brought to consciousness on the planet, and everybody's turned, tuned into it. It's going so fast; the news is spreading so fast that partly because it's drama, it's a lot of drama. A lot of people feeding into the drama, they love being the one that posts something that's really not true. Uh, and, and there's a lot of mistruths about it right now, but there's a lot of drama. And you know, my experience is that as much as people say they don't like drama, they love it. They love it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in their lives. Otherwise, they would leave it. They, they would walk away from it. But they love it. Uh, they feed off of it. It's, uh, it's kind of like a. Uh, odd way of reminding them that they're alive. So there's a lot of drama going on on the planet right now with this coronavirus. Anybody here have coronavirus? I should ask before we get started. Anybody here have it? No? Anybody uh, watching online, any Chambra, have coronavirus? Hmm? Hmm. Would you admit it if you did, <laughs> if you were sitting here? Would you admit it? Everybody's got it. Everybody's got it. You have the potential within you. You have the, the, the genes or the chromosomes that uh, essentially have it. It just hasn't manifested. It hasn't been brought to the surface. Just as every one of you has the, the genes and the chromosomes for cancer and just about everything else nasty that you can get, uh, you don't necessarily get it from out there and it suddenly arrives because somebody uh, comes up to you and gives you a big hug and, you know, face to face. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, you've got the potential within you. It's already there. It's just is triggered by things, triggered by, by attention. A lot of attention in the news to it can actually kind of trigger it. So everybody's got it. So take a deep breath with that. You already got it. Don't worry. But it doesn't mean it's going to manifest. In one of our recent workshops, I, I talked about the coronavirus, and I said, you know, every virus that there is has its energetic patterns, its origins uh, in, in something. It's not necessarily what it appears to be. The coronavirus, for instance, it's the energy of economics on the planet. It's an economic imbalance. That, uh, so the virus comes in, just, you know, the sexual energy virus. Uh, it's, it's a virus of consciousness. It shows up in the body and the mind is diff in different ways, but the coronavirus is an economic virus. Look what's happening. Not, not that many people have it. How, how many people right now do, uh, do you think are, are afflicted with it? Any guesses? Any good guesses? How many? Like 50,000. 50, Anybody else? Like two million? A billion maybe? No? It's, it's about 80,000 right now uh, that, that actually have it. Not all have been diagnosed with it. How many have died from it? 4,000. Good. Yeah. You either watch the news or you're very intuitive. <laughs> about 4,000. Now, that's a lot of people. Uh, but in the scheme of things, it's not really a lot in terms of a virus. 
the normal flu in the United States this year since uh, the, the flu season started, when would that be about October? Thirty-nine million people in America have gotten the flu. That's a lot. That's a lot more than coronavirus, but it's not in the news. And out of those, about 30,000 have died from the, just the common regular flu. So you see kind of a, uh, the strange dynamics, the, the drama, the imbalance taking place uh, with this whole coronavirus thing. It's in the news. It's everywhere. Everybody's talking about it. People are panicking. People are going to the store and wiping out, no pun intended, the toilet paper supply and hand sanitizers and all the rest of these things. Panic uh, all over. Um, I popped in. Um, Caldra and Linda were shopping the other day. And by the way, for those who are new, Caldra is what I call this uh, Jeffrey. Uh, when Caldra and Linda were shopping the other day, uh, it, was, it was crazy. I've never seen anything like it, uh, uh, with uh, people and rushing and pushing each other and taking toilet paper off of somebody else's cart <laughs> and putting it on their own. And that was Caldra. Uh, and it's, I, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. I mean, I couldn't believe he's my channeler. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of panic about the coronavirus. In a way, that's good because it brings a global consciousness. There's nothing else in the world right now that's bringing that kind of attention, focused attention on things. But at its core, uh, at its core, it's really about economics. You know, every every virus again has an uh, its energy pattern, its its meaning in something else. This is the economic virus, and look at what it's doing. Look at how it's affecting the planet. It's affecting uh, everything. Uh, travel. People stop making travel plans. They're in fear, uh, and, and the chances of them getting this. Are about 0.002 percent, about 2.002 percent. Not not a lot, but but people are in this hysteria. If they even think the word airport, they think they're going to catch it. Just thinking the word airport, it's it's causing a lot of disruptions and will continue to in things like uh, anything related to travel, airlines, hotels, business meetings. Uh, going to the office, uh, really anything that requires transactions with groups is going to be affected on the planet. It's also going to affect ultimately food distribution, mm. uh, because, uh, for instance, the, the farmer may not want to go to the market. The truck driver doesn't want to haul the goods in. Uh, nobody wants to go to the grocery store uh, because they're afraid they're going to pick it up there. So it's going to it's really going to uh, have a big impact on distribution and goods. Now, as this happens, as this occurs, uh, it's going to have an impact on the planetary uh, economy of about three and a half to four and a half percent hit on the economy. And you say, you say, well, how much money do you have in your purse right now? How much money is in your purse? You, you, uh, you could take his <laughs> take her. How much money does she have in her? How much money do you have in your pocket? Now, now, two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. So uh, it would be like losing what forty dollars or something. You get by. You, know, you probably wouldn't miss it. Uh, you wouldn't even think about it. Is that all you have in your pocket? Yes, it is. And, and you're from Poland. Yes. And you're traveling around here. Because. You have a card. Oh, you have a card. Well, I was going to give you some money to, to help with, with things, because that's all you had, but you. that's all right. You have a card, but I, I'll give you the money anyway. Uh, just, oh. just, uh, just, okay, to help you get around the island. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to make a point also. Let abundance come to you. If you're worried about this whole thing, let abundance come here. He didn't even ask for it. He didn't even want it, uh, but he got it. Uh, start expecting that, by the way. It just comes to you. You didn't come here thinking you were going to get paid to sit here. Yeah. And he said, I'm never going to spend that. <laughs> so it's going to have an impact, um, let's say, about, about 3.5 percent, maybe 4.5 percent of the 
global economy. Now, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. But not really. Because after this whole scare thing is done, things will get back to normal. People will need to go back and replenish their supplies. And then they're going to think, oh boy, I, I uh, didn't have enough toilet paper. I didn't have enough uh, emergency food. Now I better stock up on that also. And so they're going to buy a little extra. Uh, but ultimately, it's, it's bringing a focus, a uh, worldwide focus. Ultimately, it's, the thing that's going to affect most is the economy. But ultimately, it's going to get back to where it was. Uh, if you are in the stock market, if you're an investor, invest now when the prices are down because it will go back up. I mean, some of the airlines, a few may go out of business, but they'll figure out a way to get your money sooner or later. <laughs> they'll be right back in the, in the black pretty soon. But I, wanna, I want you to feel into what's really happening on the planet, the, the scare with it, the fact that really not that many have it. Uh, worst case scenario, that I kind of had done some calculations. Worst case scenario is you're going to get maybe 100 to 140 million people that have it. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of getting sick. Uh, that's a lot of laying in bed. But ultimately, the mortality rate, the death rate, is actually not that high. It's similar to slightly higher than a regular flu. So uh, yes, a lot of people die, and I'm not uh, glossing over that fact, but uh, it, it's, it's just something that's on the planet, you know, like a regular like cancer, like anything, it's going to happen. I'm not taking it lightly, but I'm saying let's not overreact to it. Let's see it for what it really is. Aloha, I'm Jeffrey Hoppe for the Crimson Circle, coming to you from Crimson Circle's Villa Amio in Kona, Hawaii. Every year since 2014, Adama St. Germain has been doing a planetary forecast called Pronost, where he looks into the next decade or so, what's going to be happening on the planet. It's interesting and amazing information, and well, it's a lot of it's become very, very true since we've been doing it in that first Pronost in 2014. Recently, with all the discussion, all the news about the coronavirus around the world, we dug up some of the old information going back to this very first Pronost that had to do with, well, a virus. We'd like you to take a look at it now and see what he had to say quite a few years ago about what was coming to the planet. Let's take a deep breath. I know this is kind of tough, but, but it's time. The virus that I talked about before uh, is going to be a very, uh, the potential, it could be more than one, but it's going to spread very quickly. This biological virus is actually manifested, was manifested because of the consciousness virus. For those of you who have taken the sexual energies class, you know there's an imbalance, whether you call it masculine, feminine, or light, dark. There was an imbalance that was caused by that. It was ultimately, truly, the imbalance is about not loving thyself. And how many people really love themselves? How many? Not many. This is a planet of almost seven billion people. I, I could probably take me about a half day to name off the names of the people who really do love themselves. But I won't. Uh, so, the virus, another, uh, it's, going, it's going to take a lot of lives at, at a very short period of time. But please have compassion and understand that, I'll talk about it more tomorrow, but many of these people were not ready, are not ready for this new era. And some of them are, will leave intentionally to make room, to make room for the possibility of the new earth and the old earth merging together. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Please don't panic. Don't. There's a mourning that takes place, but it's also it's an allowing, really. It's allowing them to leave. And here's what Adama St. Germain had to say about the coronavirus very recently, back in February 2020. 
we were doing a workshop for a group of Chambro from South Korea that had come to the island here. And he opened up the workshop talking about coronavirus because it's such a concern, well, especially even then to the Koreans, but now it's spread all around the world. Here's what he said about the essence and the energy behind the coronavirus. So let's talk about this coronavirus. Oh, does it have you a little scared? Yeah. Any virus is just about imbalance in human consciousness. Every, every virus, whether it is a physical or a mental virus. The virus uh, doesn't have an agenda. It's just there because there is an imbalance, an imbalance. And it's there to clear that imbalance, to try to bring things back into harmony. Sometimes a, a physical virus is just as simple as a way of clearing out energy imbalances in your body. But we have this special crown virus, the coronavirus, right now. It's doing a lot of things. It's getting a lot of worldwide attention. So what this is, it's a very interesting virus. It's there because of an imbalance uh, in the economy of the world. It's an economic virus, but it shows up as the flu. So you see, there's a lot of imbalances on the planet right now with economy, finances. I mean, it has been for a long time, but right now it's really coming to the surface. There are a, a few who have a lot and a lot who have very few. With the modern technologies that this planet has, there shouldn't be the bottom billion, the ones in extreme poverty. There shouldn't be. Technology has the ability to provide an even playing field for everyone. As the technology sweeps across the planet, it should be eradicating a lot of the economic imbalances. So everything is there for the planet right now, for humanity to have access, to have goods, to have food, to have medical supplies. But yet there's still this corruption that's causing the imbalance. And that's what this whole thing with the coronavirus is about. You know, the crown, the royals, they have it and nobody else does. That's why they call it the coronavirus. I mean, they didn't think of that, but that's the energy behind it. So what is this virus going to do besides be big in the news, kill some people, create a lot of fear on the planet? And very few are really going to understand what the coronavirus really represents energetically, the overall concept behind it. What this virus is really going to do in these couple of months ahead is create a lot of economic disruption. Economic disruption. Watch the news and see as plants, uh, factories, all around the world close down, entire cities close down, cruise ships with nobody on them, airplanes with hardly any passengers. Everybody's going to be sitting at home worried about this thing, and it's going to affect the economy. It's going to affect the finances of the planet for a while. Well, then it'll come back. It'll be okay. But with all the worrying, I wanted to help you to understand what's really going on with this thing called the uh, La Corona, ultimately about an economic imbalance. So the question is, what can we do about coronavirus other than taking the normal safety precautions, washing your hands, avoiding a lot of contact with other people? The important thing for all of us right now is to be in our consciousness. That's the work of the Crimson Circle. We work with the Dhamma St. Germain to bring out our consciousness, 
to allow our energy to serve us, and simply to illuminate our light upon the planet, not to try to force change, not to try to inflict anything on anybody else, but as we illuminate, as we shine our light out to others, it actually opens up possibilities that might have otherwise been in the dark, possibilities for perhaps a cure for coronavirus, possibilities for an economic change on the planet, possibilities for just about anything, and they come when you are in your consciousness, without agenda, illuminating yourself to all the rest of the world, opening up potentials that might have never been realized before. So thank you for listening to these short segments from Adama St. Germain. If you'd like more information about what he talks about or about the Crimson Circle, just go to www.crimsoncircle.com. On behalf of the entire staff and all of the Chambra around the world, we thank you for being here. Let's also talk about what's happening on planet Earth, right here in your own backyard. You have this thing called the coronavirus happening at this time. Coronavirus, any virus, has kind of an energetic origin in it. I mean, in other words, it's not just a biological imbalance. It's attempting to rebalance something else. You know, we talk about the sexual energy virus, rebalancing of the masculine and feminine so that there's no longer the conflict or the reliance. So the masculine's no longer relying or depending on the feminine and vice versa. So there's no longer the conflict between the two and the victimness that goes with it. That's what the sexual energy virus does. It's not biological, but yet it acts exactly like a biological virus. You can get infected with it. You have this coronavirus on the planet right now. But what's really happening – well, there's many levels of it – but what's happening is it's causing a reset on the planet. A reset. Who would have imagined that something like this could even be possible? Who would have imagined that humans all across the planet are staying at home? The streets are quiet. The skies are quiet. The air is quiet. People are at home, and some of them are having a very difficult time of being at home with themselves or family members. <laughs> Others will find this to be one of the most beautiful and impactful times of their life. They couldn't have planned it otherwise. They, they couldn't have planned a two-week vacation sitting at home because they'd have been tempted to go out and still do things. But right now the planet is going quiet. It's a reset. And in the reset, many are coming to the deeper parts of themselves. They're finally having some quiet. They're finally having to take a look within. It wouldn't have happened like this with this many people, the humans on the planet, taking that look within. It wouldn't have happened any other way, I don't think. So there's a brilliance behind the virus, and it is releasing many people who were ready to go. There is going to be a death toll with it, as there is with any virus, but this would be a noticeable death toll. But these are ones that were truly ready to go. In other words, it's acting like a, like a catalyst for them. It was time for them to go back home. They heard the call of the angelic families. They knew it was a time of a shift on the planet. They, they weren't ready to go forward. So they attract the virus to them. And the virus takes care of that, that issue, and soon they're gone. Some going to the New Earths, some going to the near-Earth realms for contemplation. Some will try to pop right back into this planet for another incarnation, but there's an interesting force right now where so often that happens uh, now in modern current times. Some, somebody dies, and they'll try to come back in for another incarnation within weeks or, or months. It used to be uh, decades or hundreds of years, but now they're trying to come back in weeks or months. It simply won't happen right now. 
There's so much going on in the near earth realms with the uh, the angelic beings who supervise those levels or assist on those levels to assure that those who are transitioning right now off of uh, the planet Earth out of their physical body take that quiet time. It's not just on Earth that people are taking the quiet time. The ones who are going to the near Earth realms will need to take that quiet time. Everything settling down in all of creation. The planet is going through a huge reset right now. We'll talk about uh, more of that in, in a few minutes, but I want you to feel into what's really happening. And when you feel into it, remember that you already knew. We had already gone through this. We had already talked about something happening on the planet that was going to change everything. And of course, most of you immediately go to a scenario of war, something like that, or aliens taking over. I hope none of you are thinking that way. Aliens aren't allowed here anymore. They have to leave. No more interference on this planet. What you have right now is this tremendous quiet time on the planet. It's changing everything. Changing everything. The virus itself uh, ultimately will have a huge economic impact. Oh, it al- I mean, it already has, but when it's all totaled up, a huge economic imp- impact, which will cause a shift in the economies of the planet. Now, economics, money, what is it? It's just energy. So it's the same thing that's happening, even though I say it's an economic virus. Ultimately, it's really about energy. It's about people no longer being able to blame others for their lack of abundance. For the most part, with Chambro, we got over that a while ago because I had no patience for it. If you're not in abundance, it's your own fault, because abundance is there everywhere. If you're not in it, it's because you still like being in lack. But don't get me going here. Most of those Chambra have left. Abundance is everywhere. People sitting at home, many of them are going to start thinking, do I really want to go back to that job where I truly wasn't in joy, where I wasn't abundant? They're not going to think in, in the terms that we talk about, about energy serving them, but that's ultimately what it's about. They're going to say, that wasn't serving me very well. There's a tremendous surge in the uh, creativity level in the planet right now. A lot of people are at home bored, or uh, perhaps domestic violence, or they're just wasting a lot of time on irrelevant social media. But there are many, many right now that are getting a creative surge. They're thinking to themselves, I want to do something. When, when things get back to normal, which they never will, I want to do something with my life. I, 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 I want to express. I want to experience. I want to expand myself. And I want to, well, they don't say it, but what they're really saying is come to realization, the four E's. So many are sitting home right now and they're opening up to creativity at this very, very moment. It'll take a while for them to get through some of their fears and doubts. You know what that's like. You get a big idea, a creative idea, and then the doubt mind, the doubt demons come in and tell you why you can't do it. But there's a huge surge in creativity right now for a lot of reasons. People sitting at home getting bored, contemplating, what do I really want to do with my life? But they don't know it yet. But there's a huge release from the angelic families as they disband by the end of this day on this planet. It's a huge release. It's part of the matrix that was holding things in. You know from Ancestral Freedom, and now my wonderful update, you know that there's a matrix with your ancestral family. It's so tightly woven, so much tighter than even your past lifetimes that keeps you kind of in the matrix. And this matrix of the angelic family is being released today. Most people will never realize it, maybe later on. Today they probably won't realize it, but they'll feel something changed. And it did. It's happening right now. Okay. How many humans will contract the coronavirus? How many will die from it? And when will it end? Oh my goodness, what a dark question. Dark question. Uh, Everybody's asking that, and and the reason why I wanted it asked here was because uh, 
it's not really known. It's not really known, nor do I want to make a psychic prediction on it. I'll make a calculation just based on what I observe from high above in the other realms that ultimately it's probably going to uh, affect um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 million people on the planet. Wow. Right now it's uh, thought on this, on this day uh, to be just over a million, but it's actually about closer to 1.2, 1.3 million that actually are affected by it. So the numbers could go a lot higher. Uh, the death toll as of today is about uh, 68,000 – not all of them are reported yet, but uh, the, the death toll is getting up there. The death toll on this could be anywhere uh, close to half a million and maybe up to a million people. There are a lot of factors that uh, will determine uh, what that is, but it's significant. Uh, it's significant, uh, no doubt. But there was also a lot of people ready to leave the planet, ready to leave at this time. They knew they couldn't go forward. They wanted a reboot, and that's what death is. It's a reboot. Uh, they knew it was time to leave, and there are some who have, um, let's call them, alien origins. Uh, they're whether they wanted to go or not, but they're they're going to be leaving due to this. So it's kind of a time of uh, exodus on the planet, and the amazing thing is, it's without a war. It's without the hostility. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a great time of compassion on the planet. Uh, you're going to see some of the most creative, compassionate acts of humanity. Uh, I think that have ever been on the planet at any time. 